Greek and Roman Geography by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Now, the map you see in front of you is of the Mediterranean region in that it surrounds the Mediterranean Sea. We have the continents of Europe, Africa, and Asia all meeting at this spot. And from this, we will see the rise of the Greeks and then later the Romans. The first place we're going to talk about are the Greeks. Now, the mainland of Greece is a peninsula with small islands around it. A peninsula has water on one, two, three sides. And if you're paying attention, you see that Italy is also a peninsula. Now, the land of Greece looks like it got smashed by a hammer. And each of these little pieces here are islands. All right, where there's one here, here, and from your map you've already seen in class, you're going to see that there are a lot of them, specifically in the Aegean Sea. Now, despite the fact that we have covered a lot of city-states that have good agriculture, Greece is not one of them. In fact, only one-fifth, 20% of the land is good enough to grow crops. Instead, the Greeks became traders and sailors, and they found colonies as far as Spain, France, and Egypt. Spain is over here, here's France, and down here where we've already covered is Egypt. And they all came from Greece. Now, the topography. Topography, as we've talked about, is the physical landscape. Now, this physical landscape is very mountainous. There's many mountains here, making the easiest way to travel was by boat. Even the islands had mountain peaks. Now, please take a moment and highlight the word peninsula. Land of Greece looks smashed hammer, one-fifth good growing crops. Sailors, traders, easiest way, travel, boat. That's a lot to highlight, but it's going to be helpful for us later on. Please take a moment to pause the video or rewind if you need to. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Now, the Greek geography, the mountains themselves, helped create small settlements. Because remember, the topography, the land, made it difficult for people to travel and communicate together. And unfortunately, the Greeks were so busy fighting to realize that they actually had very similar heritage, culture, gods, and language. Why would you want to fight with someone that was so similar to you? And it's because each of these communities believed that their own customs and beliefs were the best. And they were willing to go to war to defend it. Now, take a moment and please highlight similar heritage, gods, and language, small settlements, War protect itself. And we're going to make a little change there because that's bad. Whoops. Now, please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Now, the next thing we have is Roman geography. The Romans on the other side are located over here in modern-day Italy. And their empire extended to the modern-day countries of Spain, England, Egypt, and the Middle East. In reality, they spread from here all the way to the north in where England is, all the way over here, 
and all the way to the south. They controlled almost everything on this map. That's amazing. Now, it's located, as you saw on the map, west of Greece, and it kind of looks like it's a boot, right? It kicks the ball, here's the feet, and it's kicking that ball. Now, the topography of Rome itself, which is, as you learned today, right there, is of the seven hills that protected Rome itself from invasion. Now, that didn't matter too much once Rome began to control the whole peninsula, but early on it gave them a huge edge in protection. Rome also had the Tiber River and a lot of fresh water flowing through this whole peninsula and giving them a lot of fertile soil. Please take a moment and highlight present-day Italy, west of Greece, very fertile soil. Now, we're going to look at this much closer in class next time. But for now, you have the basics on Roman and Greek geography. The end.